Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is so welcome to the acquia podcast today another video podcast the acquia podcast is where we talk about drupal community technology and business open source all those related topics i have with me today kevin miller kevin why don't you introduce yourself tell us a little bit about what you do in drupal and otherwise um, so, yeah, I, I work for a small state university, Cal State Monterey Bay. I'm the, I like to say, we lead web developer because I'm the only web developer. Um, and I've been working in Drupal since 4.7, so I've been around for a while and um, have maintained a number of modules before. Kevin Miller, what's your favorite thing about Drupal? My favorite thing about Drupal is the fact that I can uh, take a rough concept and get a working prototype together within a few hours. Um, that really helps our customers and our clients visualize what they're trying to do rather than doing a lot of hand waving uh, beforehand. I'm in marketing, so you can leave the hand waving to me. That's fine. Right? Okay. <laughs> Kevin, what's your favorite Drupal module? My favorite is we did install the pirate module uh, for Talk Like a Pirate Dave and translated all of our campus to pirate speak for about two hours before our president caught us. <laughs> Kevin Miller, what do you tell other people that your job is? I, I usually say that I, I'm, you know, my job is to take, translate what people want into what they actually need. Um, you know, in a university, they, a lot of what I do is uh, just grabbing students at lunch, asking them about what their uh, challenges are, or, or jumping into a committee meeting and asking somebody uh, questions, and, and that's really what my job is to, sol is to solve problems. Okay, we just, got, we just got the headline for this podcast. Kevin Miller, my job is grabbing students at lunch. Yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> let's, take, let's take one step outwards. Mm -hmm. Why open source? What value does open source bring to, to you and to organizations and maybe to the, to the world? So, uh, and I, uh, open source, I think the, the biggest value, and this has been my experience, working in an institution with a variety of blended environment of both open and closed source. If you're trying to, you know, use a closed source product in the way that it's intended, then you can probably succeed just fine. But when you're trying to stretch it out or make one project work with another project work with another project, um, unless you're vendor is, you know, it, unless you're a large client and somebody who's actually going to listen to you, you're probably not going to get heard. Microsoft's not going to pick up the phone and listen to us. Uh, so open source gives us the flexibility to take technology, make it work for our use case, which is very unique, um, and not have to go begging to a vendor uh, to, to make that work. Um, that being said, open source also kind of when you have an environment that does have closed source products, open source is great because you can fit it in as glue between those things. Nice. So even open source is an integration layer almost. Mm -hmm. Definitely. In the Drupal community, there has been quite a lot of buzz around accessibility. I've been I've met a lot of people recently who are really talking about this, and I know that you're very involved in Drupal accessibility. Could you start out by giving us a quick thumbnail sketch of what accessibility on the web today 
really means and how people um, traditionally have made sure that their sites and projects are accessible? Sure, and, and, and the way that I kind of entered accessibility is I actually, there are several people in my life who use assistive technology. Um, so I sort of entered accessibility from not the web developer's perspective, but the perspective of the legally blind user who has to come and ask for help because they are having difficulty getting homework turned in to LMS. Um, so I, when I think about accessibility, I always think of that sort of quality of life issues for users um, who are really prevented from doing things that we take for granted because somebody was not thinking about accessibility. The more traditional solutions are actually mostly closed source um, things that are more about CYA legal coverage than um, actually making a web page accessible. Um, so a lot of those, I won't name vendor names here, but there's a lot of products that scan your website um, and then generate a, a PDF report and turning over a 200 page report to you know a content author just makes them frustrated about accessibility. Um, so you're introducing a stick to users, so those traditional solutions work, you know, to show due diligence um, and maybe to cover you for legal requirements, but they don't actually translate into either content authors or developers or front-end um, designers actually making a website accessible. Um, so paint us a paint us a picture of how someone testing a website for accessibility. In a, in a realistic way, how, how that's been done so far? It would be a lot of clicking, and I think both today, you know, with the advances that we've made with automated testing, um, there is still a lot of manual testing that has to be done, especially for things like complicated web applications, uh, appropriate use of ARIA roles so that um, there is an auditory interface for something like Gmail, Right, that has to be a process that an expert goes through and manually validates with a variety of different assistive technology tools. Um, but for you know content, um, which typically is less has less moving parts, so to speak, um, you would either in with prior tools or with things like the accessibility module. Um, be able to get a really good automated response in terms of what problems there are. Um, there's always that gray area where a human has to come in and validate that, uh, you know, this is actually an issue or this was a false positive. Um, so it's no panacea. Talk about what you've been doing with the Quail jQuery plugin and Drupal, and maybe the accessibility module as well. Okay, so. Um, Quail was started because I was angry uh, using one of those traditional tools. Were you rage coding? I was rage coding. I said, how hard can it be to select an image that's missing alt attribute on the page? Um, so Quail uh, 1.0 was written in PHP. Quail stands for Quail Accessibility Information Library. I just wanted to call it Quail, so I gave, a, I gave it a, an acronym. Um, but that was the first kind of attempt to translate accessibility testing into an open source project. The barriers that we ran into were, you know, first using, at that time, uh, tools like uh, uh, Query Path for PHP were really not around, so I was writing my own DOM implement, you know, DOM layer on top of the PHP DOM, uh, which is already a mess, and then when it came to things like, how can we tell if the text has appropriate contrast? Well, that requires writing your own CSS parser and select, you know, CSS selection engine um, and PHP, and which we did kind of do, but it was a, it was a beast. It took, you know, with a, a lot of the ex different extensions for Quail, uh, it was it, it was very difficult to maintain. So after, actually, on the train back from uh, DrupalCon uh, in, in Colorado, 
uh, I just threw everything away and said, let's rewrite this in jQuery because it makes the browsers, the browser knows the, the DOM, the browser knows CSS. We can give much more fluid feedback to the user. And so we rewrote a, a Quail, so that is Quail 2. It has a suite of over 200 tests for things like, you know, does the image's alt attribute mean something? So if the image's alt is just the name of the file, that's probably not appropriate. It should be something that's descriptive. All the way to, do you have a GIF that's animated that flickers too much for, for users who are uh, have photosensitive epilepsy? Um, or even, is the YouTube video you're linking to captioned, which we can test through a JSON API. So there's a lot of different, comp, you know, it's very simple tests like image missing and alt to very complicated tests that look at external services. On top of Quail needs, for Drupal, there needs to be a, you know, layer that gives an interface for site builders to select tests and to test content for content authors. So that's where the accessibility module comes into play. And that module does a number of things. It has a, a base API layer for um, developers to you know, implement Quail in whatever way they see fit. And then it has sub-modules for checking content. Um, so if the author uh, is you know, viewing a page, they can edit. It can highlight areas that are, that are problems right on the screen. Um, we have tests. We also have sub-modules to do that in WYSIWYG editors. So just kind of like the red squiggly underline for spelling errors, we can do the same for accessibility problems. Um, and this is, this is real time and during the content authoring workflow, right? Yes. The, 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 the one caveat with WYSIWYG is we don't do it while you type just because we can't tell that while typing. So we, we you know, you, you click a button, it checks all the content in the WYSIWYG editor or it'll check every time a new paragraph is entered. But um, it sounds like it, it's providing a, a, a nearly painless and very positive feedback loop for people exactly. working on web, websites, right? Yeah, and when the modules enable, um, the t every test in Quail can be imported into your site, so you don't have to turn them all on. I would say don't turn them all on, because uh, that would be pretty crazy. But um, So you can cut, the site builder can customize those tests, so they can really customize the feedback to be specific to their um, editing environment. Um, and those tests are also exportable via features. So if, you know, if the end goal is a module can, like a, a WYSIWYG plugin um, or a, let's say the, the media management uh, tools could come with their own definition of how to solve accessibility problems for their specific module. And then we also have test uh, sub-modules, kind of like the Devel Themer module that has a little widget, you turn it on and it gives you feedback on what areas, of, you know, what was responsible for rendering areas of the page. Um, that module just tests the entire page, which you don't want to do for content authors. Content authors should only see feedback on fields that they can edit and fields where they can actually fix the problem. We don't want to show them an accessibility problem in the header because they're going to be like, I, don't, I can't fix it. So the accessibility theming module does that for certain permissioned users so they can get feedback on an entire page. And then we also have um, the uh, test swarm integration so that um, you can automatically do, do automatic browser testing for accessibility uh, in your site. And finally, we have a, a still nascent reporting module that basically kind of works like Google Analytics. And then it gives feedback to Drupal in a little Ajax call saying, I found the following errors. And then that, that becomes a, a, that can be exposed via views to build a report. You know, if you used it with something like um, the statistics module, you could then say, not only what are the pages with the biggest errors, but what are the pages with the most traffic with the biggest errors, and what are the most common ones that we can, you know, if you're implementing this on top of a site with existing content, you can focus your efforts on biggest impact. 
you mentioned that some of these pieces need some work. How's the what what uh, how can people help out? How's mm -hmm. the state of your D8 uh, development going? What's the where can we, where can we jump in and, and be a part of this? It sounds really it's, exciting. It, it's exciting, and it's I mean it's very new. Um, it, I've only been working on this for about a month. Um, my hope is that we have a at least a beta coming out by Bad Camp, and we'll be doing some sprints at Bad Camp. Do you mean uh, about the re the reporting piece? No, the entire the entire suite of modules. Oh. So because we. The areas that we need the biggest work on are, are um, the module comes with a sort of default text for every test so that the site builder has at least something uh, to define what that test title is and its body so that they can base their you know, customizations on top of that. Those descriptions are very generic and need uh, copy editing and there's a lot of them. Um, so I will be launching as part of the Drupal A11Y.org website a interface for people to actually propose changes to those test messages. Um, and those will actually get rolled into the default Quail uh, uh, project as well as accessibility. Um, and and uh, so that's one area is we just need people to do that sort of content creation or content writing about every test and how to solve that problem. How about uh, localizing those? Yeah, so the way that uh, those are actually stored in a, in a profile. Uh, and so I'll it, I just use the Perfect. standard. Yeah, so they, they, they the, that uh, translation is also going to be key. Um, OK. So people can jump in there, uh, helping out with the interface side of things. Correct, and I and I also post a weekly post to the accessibility groups in groups.drupal.org saying right. what has happened this week, what are our problem areas, what are things that we need feedback from the community on. So if you're looking for um, specific highlighted issues, that's the place to look. Okay, so I'll link to that GDU, GDO group as well. Mm -hmm. Kevin Miller, give us your shameless plug. Go to drupal.org slash project slash accessibility, click on issues and start giving us issues or giving us patches. The D8 module originally was um, very focused on testing Drupal core for accessibility. So that the, the Drupal A11Y.org website is where we store the results so people can see where Quail is thinking there are problems with Drupal core. Um, so that's an, is an interesting area to, if you're looking to, you know, validate those and report them as a false positive or report them as an issue in Drupal.org. Um, and we're hoping that that, we can actually s start baking that into TestBot stuff for, for D9. So the long-term plan is that by, you know, if we can prove that D8, you know, automated, automated testing in D8 core uh, can work and is scalable, that we can actually bake that into the workflow process for Drupal 9 development. That is a really uh, nice vision. That would be pretty great. Yeah, I think it would be great. It will it will take a lot of um, work, but I think it will also save us from a lot of, you know, catching up to what people have done and filing issues on top of other issues that introduce problems, so. Fantastic. Hey, Great. thanks so much. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk no with me. It's been really, really interesting. Thank you. I, I, the more we can spread the word, the better. So. We're redoing some of the user interface elements to make them more accessible, because I hope the accessible module is accessible. That could be a good title for the podcast as well. I hope the yeah. accessibility module is accessible. <laughs>